Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to another Save Your Disaster campaign. And this one actually doesn't look too bad at first glance. And as far as I can tell, I, I, I took a moment here just to have a quick glance around things to see what was going on and what I could maybe help out with. And it actually doesn't look all that bad. You've got plenty of land, you've got plenty of cities settled. You've got a decent faith income. You have some pretty late game technology. It's a little bit late into the game. Uh, it's a little bit slow. Honestly, by around turn 290, you should have, you should really be up around nearing globalization and social media. You should have all that stuff sort of done. And uh, tech wise, you're also a little bit behind. You went for a bit of a weird play. Now you are going for a culture game as far as I can tell. So you went straight for the Eiffel Tower. Did you get the Crystal Redden Tour? Because that is going to dictate some things here. You did not get or build the Crystal Red and Tor. Is that an option? Hmm. Looks like it might have been built somewhere else in the world. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So the Crystal Red and Tor is gone as far as we can tell and I don't think we have access to seeing it on the map. Now, there's a few problems that we need to deal with. First of all, let's have a look at the wind conditions here. The Ottomans are going for a uh, science victory as far as we can tell right now so we're gonna have to try and send some spies against the ottomans to get them to stop doing that thing if we take a look here we can see that they have done satellites and done the earth the the earth and moon landing they don't have nanotechnology yet so they haven't started the mars colony so we have a bit of time we in terms of culture currently russia is leading but we can catch up pretty easily because we have a decent faith line we have a pretty good culture line uh, in terms of domination, it doesn't look like anyone is really going for that. Religion-wise, I don't think you were going for a religion game right now. Yeah, you didn't get a religion. Usually a good idea to get a religion in a culture game. Uh, I have a couple of guides on how to get religions in a culture game. Usually it just involves rushing a holy site. Your empire is pretty well built, uh, with the exception of tiles. Tiles are just not really improved very well everywhere. Now I'm curious, what government plans of buildings did you go for? Let's see if I can get this to show up. You went for the Ancestral Hall. So this is a bit of a problem. You never unlocked... As far as I can tell, your second government. Why don't you? Why don't you have a second government? That's very confusing. You should definitely have reformed church plugged in, um, for sure. Because also, why do you have craftsmen and town charters in when you don't have um, industrialization? That's a little bit weird. Did you build a bunch of industrial zones? You have really, really good industrial zones, but you didn't do the important part. Which is to, um, you got to unlock industrialization and build your coal power plants. Like, that's that's important. You were going for combined arms, uh, presumably because you're planning on nuking someone. I guess we can unlock the uranium and maybe make use of that. But you definitely want to get industrialization. Uh, typically, before you unlock the Eiffel Tower, you are building the Eiffel Tower, actually, as we speak. Which is going to be helpful for winning a culture victory. However, if we go into the search here, always do this when you're building a wonder. We can have a look around and see if anyone else is currently building the Eiffel Tower. And it looks like, over here, Sweden is building it. So what we're going to do is, in order to secure that, we're going to look in here. We have about 15 populations. So we're going to look for tiles that have production on them and see if we can steal them. Uh, looks like we really don't have any that we can do that with, which is a bit unfortunate. Are there any tiles that we could rework to put more production on? Not really. Do we have available trade routes? We do have an available trade route. Could we purchase it in here? No, it looks like that trader is indeed just somewhere else. You're also building the mausoleum, Mahala Karnassus. And ideally, if you're building the mausoleum, you want to work production because that'll shave a turn off that and that'll maybe get us a little bit quicker. Let's have a look at the mausoleum. Yeah, there's three bil people building it right now. And Huex Tlokla is a little bit further along than you. So how do we secure this? Well, it's going to involve purchasing a builder here and these forests. So let's get ourselves a builder in here and chop this down. In terms of age right now, we are in a normal age and we have the heartbeat of steam. But yeah, you should definitely have uh, a little bit of different stuff. You should not hard build this dam, in my opinion. It's a great idea. Getting the dam is a wonderful, brilliant idea. However, don't hard build it. It's 532 production, but this city produces 12. You could just as easily come over here to Gdansk and grab some military engineers for probably three of them for, you know, quite a bit of production. But you could just move them over to Gdansk and get that made a little bit quicker. In fact, I'm pretty sure you might have another encampment somewhere. Do you? No, but you have at least the one encampment. So I'll tell you what, I will build two and then purchase one military engineer. Oh, they're a little bit too expensive. Darn. 
Oh no, you have you have a military engineer. Oh, okay. I should actually, you know what? I should look through the list and see if there's anything worth mentioning. You have a great musician hanging out here. That's great. Oh, and and the reason the reason you want to get down towards industrialization is because that leads quite easily onto radio, which is a good source of culture and stuff like that. So you have a military engineer. We're going to send that down to uh, Kato Katavich. Katavich. I'm not sure how to say that, but we'll send him down there to uh, get that built up a little bit. And in fact, we're going to use that gold, cancel that military engineer, and we'll purchase a military engineer. Because we want to get this built as fast as we can, because it's going to help the city grow, it's going to give it amenities, all that great stuff. You you do you are building a lot of builders, so it looks like you've noticed that you've made a mistake, but really, you should be in a different government. So rather than finishing whatever we... Oh, well, I guess we're finishing ideology anyway. But yeah, you should always, always, always take a tier 2 government, at the very least, for the purpose of building your tier 2 government plaza building. We're going to try to relocate uh, traders over here. Is there anywhere that I could maybe get another trader? Do you have a harbor built up somewhere that we could get our hands on something? Let me see. Is there anywhere that we could get another trade route just by purchasing if we were to sell a bit of stuff? No, you have most of the stuff built as far as I can tell. Also, you haven't built your monument, your granaries and water mills everywhere. Those are really, really important. Get them. They're, they're very, very cost effective things to invest production into. Like if you look at this... Um, the granary is 65 production, and I'm pretty sure the city is fairly old because it's 10 population. You don't get to a 10 population city without like a lot of investment. And you could have uh, you could have extra housing, you could have extra food, and you could have extra food and extra production, which, you know, it's not much, but it adds up over a long course of the game. At this point, though, 80 production for plus one production per turn isn't that great of an investment at turn 287, but I would still have considered building that before I went for the campus. In fact, I would fully go for this first. Just get these. These are these are important buildings. They're going to help you grow and produce and get all that sort of stuff. This city also needs builders. Now, uh, let's have a look at your government, your governors. Okay, you have Magnus. You have the industrialist promotion without a power plant. Or do you have power plants? Did you go for... Well, oil power plants are all the way up here as well. So, I don't see you having oil power plants. Were you, for some reason, going for nuclear power plants? Don't do that. That's a little bit awful. Yeah, you should, you should totally have coal power plants by now because you have these really, really amazing... Um, you have these really, really amazing industrial zones, but you never got the, the thing that makes them turbo amazing. You could have upwards of an extra uh, 50 to 60 production throughout your empire by putting factories and coal power plants in here, which is, you know, the entire point of doing the industrial zone thing. Like, you did you, you did very well to make, make this part of the thing, but you didn't kind of complete that. Um, I also would have, if I was doing this the way that you did it, I would have had Warsaw build the industrial zone on this tile, and I would have had Poznan kill this um, stone resource and build its thing there. Generally speaking, you've done a fairly good job. Just one major problem is you haven't developed your land very well. You, you haven't nearly got enough builders anywhere, um, which is a big problem. So I, I would say, generally speaking, you've done a good job. And as far as I can tell, you're trying to win by culture. So I'm going to try to win that way for you. You've done okay in diplomacy. You have friendships with people, but you don't have alliances with people, which seems a little bit of a mistake to me. That's a diplomatic favor that you're missing out on, which you could use to vote in World Congress things. Or you could use it to sell diplomatic favor to the AI and get a whole bunch of gold to put into other things. So, I, I, so again, I, I would say this player has played fairly well, considering that it is Im immortal. They haven't made any, like, cripplingly awful, terrible decisions. It's really just sort of uh, macro and uh, sort of macro level uh, decision making that you've made a couple of errors on, like not going for industrialization, and a couple of micro level decisions like not developing your land with builders. So I'm hopefully going to try to rectify all that. I think the current plan is to see if we can... Are there any of our trade routes ending soon? Not really. That's unfortunate. I would really, really like it if there was a trade route finishing somewhere so that we could get another trade route into Krakow. Um, but let's have a look at the diplomacy screen. So Suleiman is a problem, and we're going to need to get open borders with some people to get over here. Do you have a unit that is relatively fast that you could scout with? Let's have a look through the unit list. I'm looking for, like, a horseman. Okay, you do, in fact, have a cavalry all the way up here to the north, which um, is not too far away from coming down to the Ottomans to scout. And you do have open borders with Germany. Now let's kind of think about who we want to get alliances with. So the Ottoman has 2,500 military strength, and they're pretty ahead technologically and culturally. 
They are next to the Aztecs, who are really, really far behind, so we don't want to ally the Aztecs to use them in a war against them. On the other hand, we have uh, Japan over here. Japan is pretty damn powerful. I would say not on par with the Ottomans, but at least comparable to them. So let's go ahead and make a deal with J Japan. We'll get open borders with you. We'll get a little bit of gold. Then we're going to get an alliance. We're going to get a military alliance with Japan. Okay, and uh, it's, it's really important. This is something, this is a mistake you've made. Um, you're going for a culture victory, and as far as I can tell, you don't have open borders with everyone. When you're going for a culture victory, you want to make sure that you have open borders with every single person. I'll explain why in a moment, because if we go up to the victory condition over here, and we look at tourism pressure, and we look at somebody who we just got open borders with, for example, if we see here with um, Hojo, we get a 25% tourism boost for having open borders with him. And that adds up throughout the entire game. So always make sure when you're going for a culture victory, get open borders and all that sort of stuff. Get friendships, everything that you can, but everyone who you can, because that's going to make it so that you win faster. And by having lots of friendships, when you have a friendship with someone, they can't declare war on you, which means you can be greedier and not build a military because you're protected from war. So let's go ahead and get open borders with Norway because Norway is one of our neighbors. We want to have good relations with him. Also, keep in mind, uh, if you have open borders, you get slightly better uh, French, like you get better opinion with people, which is really, really nice. You won't be able to get friendships with everyone in the game unless you're like me and sometimes you get very lucky. But you can almost always, as long as somebody isn't denouncing you, you can get open borders and you can also get a little bit of gold from open borders throughout the entire game, which is going to add up. And don't be afraid to give people open borders either. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of like a bit wary of that. Don't don't worry about that. In terms of Korea, what we're going to do is we are going to look for a research alliance. Korea is pretty good technologically ahead of us. And uh, generally speaking, if you're the person who's behind in tech, you're the one who wants the scientific alliance. If you're ahead in tech, you want to avoid getting a scientific alliance. So getting a scientific alliance with Korea is just a net good for us because we get more benefit out of it than they will. Because we get because every 30 turns on standard, we unlock a Eureka for a tech that my ally has researched or boosted, but I haven't. So what that means is they almost certainly have like a whole bunch of technology that I don't, but it's very unlikely that I have a whole bunch of tech that they don't. So it's more likely that I am going to benefit from this. And not only that, but once it levels up, we'll get 10% uh, science when you or my ally has researched a tech that, or, or when I'm researching a tech that they have already researched, right? So these benefits just get better as you progress through the game. So it's really, this is really, really important. And in fact, we already have a level two alliance with them, which is really, really nice. And if we could get that level three alliance, that would be really, really nice as well. So just, just keep that in mind. You want to get, if, if you're behind someone technologically and you're not in a position to take them out in a war, just get an alliance with them and it'll, it'll make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so the Eiffel Tower is a problem. We are building another settler. I'm not sure. I think the settler is for claiming some of this tundra land for um, national parks. We definitely need to get our faith income up, which is why I think it's a mistake that you haven't gone for theocracy, which we'll be going for next turn. Now, we still haven't ended the turn yet. Um, over here in Radom, for example, you should definitely get the water mill before you go for the holy site, just because this gives you food, production, all the great stuff. You also need a builder in here. Um, over here, you're building the shopping mall, which gives you tourism. That's fine. I think it would be better to get the granary first because that's going to give you housing. And the city does potentially have tiles that it could work with that housing. Gdansk is working a lot of tiles. I'm trying to see if there's any tiles that I could give. So yeah, like we could have fishing boats here. We could have a mine there. There's lots of stuff that we could do to improve this. Um, let's see, is there anything I want to change? You're building an amphitheater here. You don't have a granary. I don't know how you have seven of three population without granaries built. Let me know if something has gone wrong in the transition of the save. Um, this is fine. Plock. Yeah, granary and watermill. Watermill first, then go for the granary. You don't need the water park yet. The city needs to get built up so that it can actually get work done. Remember, these buildings don't have any upkeep, so they're just always a net good to get them. They're really, really cheap. It's probably a bit late into the game to really be focusing on getting them. Should not be building a settler in here. Uh, the city would be far better at just mass producing builders for you. And now it only gets them every 11 turns, but that builders are just better because you can improve territory. You can send them off to improve other places, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, there you go. I'm going to call that the end of this very first turn. I think we've done a decent amount of management. We have improved our relations. I don't really want an alliance with the Aztecs. What I want to look for is somebody who I might be able to get a good cultural alliance with. Somebody who's nearby. Who am I trading with? I'm trading with Korea, so that's going to get me a bit of science. Now, how is Sweden doing on the culture? Sweden has really good culture, so I'm going to see what is our relations with Sweden like. 
Okay, so they're actually pretty happy with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to see... Oh, I didn't mean to give them that. I meant to see what they would pay for it. But I gave them a favorable trade deal. Let me see how much they pay for diplomatic favor. Wait a minute. Why don't you have any gold? You do? Huh. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to give Sweden about 71 gold. And that will hopefully... Yep, yeah, now they're up to plus 10 favorable trade deals. So they should flip to neutral, which will allow us to get an embassy next turn. And they get an alliance with them. And I'll go for a cultural alliance with Sweden because they're my neighbor. And I'll be able to trade with them for culture. Worst comes to worst, we might have to invade Sweden for the Eiffel Tower. But we do have a head start on them, so I'm not too worried. Persia is denouncing me. That's really bad. That's really not quite good. Persia isn't anywhere near me, though, as far as I can tell. Uh, Norway denounced me, too. All right, that is unfortunate. So that means they're potentially looking to go to war with us. There's ideology. We'll handle that. Let's save this cavalry. We'll bring it up here and we'll go for the comparison. So it's a little bit better against anti-cavalry. Let's go ahead and deal with this government. Um, yeah, you you definitely should have taken theocracy here because that would give you a discount on faith purchases and just generally be better than oligarchy. So let's go ahead and plug in this. Let's pull out all of our cards and kind of make some decisions about what the best way to do things are here. Uh, Vissel Biken is pretty good because we are trying to trade with allies. I think uh, Economic Union is pretty decent, as is Five Year Plan. These are going to give us science, gold and production. I definitely should have Public Works plugged in because we're going to be building a lot of builders as far as I can tell. Triangular Trade is always a good filler policy. In terms of military policy, a good filler policy is Levy en masse if you don't have a specific thing. Out of curiosity, did you build Renaissance walls everywhere? And uh, you know what? This is why, okay, so this is why we do not go for steel until we have Renaissance walls in every single city, or at least as many of them as we can possibly get them. Because Renaissance walls actually have a very, or walls in general, have a very unique property in that when you build them, you get three tourism from the Renaissance walls, you get two tourism from the medieval walls, and you get one tourism from the ancient walls. So if you build all of those things and have a really strong culture game, you can actually completely neglect science and push, well, not completely neglect it, but pretty fairly neglect it. Because by the time you get urbanization, Renaissance walls will give you two science in every single city. Not only that, but having all three walls, since they're all dependent on each other, once you research the conservation civic, you will get six tourism per city. So that is, that's really why we almost never, ever, ever want to pick up steel before we get all our Renaissance walls built up. Because when you research steel, you can no longer build walls that you haven't already started building. So that would be a sort of macro level decision that you've made a mistake here. And that, that would be an adjustment on the strategic level. So that's why I almost always, even when I'm going for a culture game, I'll grab industrialization before I head for steel. Because that allows me to press for really high production. And then I can build a couple of campuses and then quickly rush up the science tree to steel and so on and so forth. So yeah, that would be a big thing because right now uh, in my government, I would love to plug in military research and this would be the perfect time to plug it in, but you never built all those Renaissance walls. So that's unfortunately just not going to work. So since you didn't do that, we will just plug in Levé en masse. I'll put Whistle, Whistle Bank in here. I don't think you have a whole lot of suzerainties for Raj, do you? You have three suzerainties. So in terms of output, this uh, policy right here is only giving you uh, six science, six culture, six faith, and six gold. I think you can get a lot more value just from merchant confederation, right? Because gold is easily translatable into other production and stuff like that. But Vissel Banking is pretty good. Let me see. Are you actually trading with your allies? We have an alliance with Korea. Uh, so yeah, you're actually mostly doing internal trade routes. So that's why I don't think Vissel Bank in here is the right choice either. So I'm going to pull both of those out. In fact, you should probably put Machiavellianism in because you're you're going to need to start spying on people, not only to stop them from winning the game, but also to steal gold and stuff like that from them. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm definitely identifying a lot of sort of strategic errors you've made here. But these are these are what I would call sort of minor errors. Your, your general game plan has been really, really good. Also, people have been saying that I'm a little bit mean to people who send in these save files. And I think you're right. I, I have been a little bit mean. So I'm going to... I, I will make an effort to be a little bit less mean. Uh, I make that promise to you. Grand Opera uh, could make sense here. But definitely, Levy on Mass, Five Year Plan, Economic Union, these all definitely make sense in terms of getting extra value out of your empire. I think for now, I'm just going to plug in Triangular Trade because I don't, I don't want to have to redo this entire government when I go out and check on your holy sites. If your holy sites have really good adjacency and are in cities with really high populations, yeah, see, they're only plus two adjacency on your holy sites in a lot of them. So I don't think the adjacency card is very good. So I think Triangular Trade is, in fact, better here to get that extra gold. Now, in terms of Civic... Generally speaking, I would say that you've made the right civic choices. It's just really, really late to be plugging in the government that we have. Um, 
we're going to have to try to delay here picking up democracy and stuff like that as much as I want democracy. Democracy is definitely the best um, government to go for in a cultural game. I think I'm going to go ahead and yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll start to work on a suffrage. But really what we needed to build was this intelligence agency. So I'm going to queue that up after the Eiffel Tower. And unfortunately, why can't I get another trader? I'm a little bit confused about that. My civilization needs more trade route capacity. I have eight trade routes active. Should I not be able to produce a trader? That is a little bit confusing. I think you have a trader set to sleep somewhere. So let me have a look through your, your list of traders. Here we go. We have a trader over here near the capital. I'm going to send that to the capital. And then I'll be trading from here to hopefully maybe shave a turn off of the Eiffel Tower. I don't know if that's going to work, but I think it's worth trying. Oh, Warsaw was building the trader. Of course, derp. So if we take a look around, uh, what can Warsaw do for us in terms of what we need? Let's have a look at our um, current great work situation. We're missing a lot of great works of writing, as far as I can tell. So I think... Let's have a look. We are currently the leader for great people points, so we're not under major pressure to run cultural projects to to get more although we are a bit late into the game so that might be worth it on the other hand builders would be really really good because we are uh fairly close also the other reason you go up to industrialization is because you can push for early radio and pick up seaside resorts so this is just your uh, the top half of the tech tree is actually way 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 better for cultural games because you have access to industrialization you have access to radio you have access to computers up here, which gives you a 25% tourism boost across your empire. That's really, really powerful. So I think just combined arms here is... We're already heavily invested into it, so I will finish it. But it really is, in my opinion, uh, the wrong play. You haven't built any spies, as far as I can tell. Uh, so we're going to build a spy in Warsaw. That's going to be very, very useful, not only for stealing gold, but potentially hurt hurting other people. We do have walls and stuff up here, and we got ourselves another military engineer to head down here. Okay, Wads, Wads the finished its um, dam. It's not going to build this in a reasonable amount of time, and we already have room for art, so we don't need an art museum. We could make do with an archaeological museum. We don't have a granary in here. The granary will be good. We also need builders, so I'm going to get builders in here. Builders is just far better. Although this city really needs to build its um, really needs to build its uh, districts, more trade routes would be good. We do have an amazing, amazing spot for an industrial zone, but you kind of did this weird thing with this guy. So I'm going to put the industrial zone in Wads, I think, the plus five industrial zone, and in fact, in Radom, we can do an aqueduct right here, and then eventually an industrial zone right here so you know your your city planning is actually fairly decent i will give you credit for that you've done a good job planning your city um just execution is a little bit weak i'll, I'll, I'll i do have to dock points for that so i think it's probably a good time to also start making decisions about where our national parks are going so if we look over here this is basically just dead land right here um it's never going to be really be useful now the problem is one two three it's not in range of a city uh, all three of these tiles have to be in range of the same city. So we're not going to be able to turn that into a national park. And the appeal here isn't good enough. So I would have identified this pretty early into a game as a spot that I wanted to put a national park. And I wouldn't have... I, I would have put a city a little bit closer to it. I think um, that's another small mistake. So we've got to start looking for places where we can fit a national park. And here, uh, again, you know, you're, you're so close to greatness. And that's what hurts me here. Is there's another great, great spot for a national park right here but you don't have a city that's within three tiles of all of these tiles so you can't do it there's another spot right here that we can do it so that's that's totally fine we can put a national park right here and i often just just put a pin down to remind yourself that you're going to put a national park there like so so the national park will be going there and that is what we're going to be using the majority of our faith for and plus also really really important um about why we go for the theocracy government you get a 15 percent discount on purchases with faith and that includes naturalists which is really good for a culture game because you can purchase these naturalists at a really big discount so i'm gonna grab a naturalist and plug him in there also you get error score when you place down a naturalist so that's a really good source of things too i'm curious have you actually built any natural uh 
is it national national park yeah it looks like you haven't actually done any national parks yourself which i think is a bit of a mistake considering you had a pretty good faith gain i'm not really sure what you were spending your faith on considering you don't have the thing that allows you to faith by unit so in terms of trying to secure the mausoleum we'll get to work on that now i never moved all your governors around and i definitely feel like um investing this deeply into uh governors at this stage of the game is a big mistake okay so these these two promotions are extremely high value this is lower value and this is lower value so these two promotions could have very easily been in somebody like liang you could have just got one point in liang so that you have a place that you can spam builders more efficiently you could have for example put two points into reina to get a uh, harbor master and tax collector get all the way down here i definitely think industrialist industrialist uh you, you never want to go for both of these i feel like i feel like industrialist this is this is more late game when you start actually running out of fuel is when you want to do this i think that's a mistake uh, i think surplus logistics is fine um but generally speaking i wouldn't ever try to really make take advantage of this unless i have a really small empire and i need to grow my capital city really really big and you don't have a small empire and you don't need to grow your capital city really really big because it doesn't have a whole lot of tiles to work right because it's, it's hemmed in and wedged in by all these cities so yeah Definitely, in terms of your governor titles, I would not have picked these two, and I would not have picked these two, and I would have instead invested one point into Liang with one of those, and then three points into Reina in my in, one, in my second highest population city to get a whole bunch of gold per turn. Now, in terms of your placement of these guys, I don't know why Magnus is in your capital. Um, Pingala would generate an extra four science. Let me have a look at the base yields here. So the base yields in here are about 20 and 34 compared to the base yield in here yeah you would get slightly more value from having uh pingala established in the capital rather than over here and then you just by not invest see here, here's the big problem right i'm gonna i'm gonna really explain this here's the big problem with going for surplus logistics in order to get the most value out of magnus which is this promotion right here which is his most valuable promotion as well as provision you need to be moving him around in order to be getting value from surplus logistics not only do you have to invest an extra governor title into magnus but in order to take advantage of this thing you can't move him around which means you can't take advantage of his most valuable promotion so that that's that's kind of like the, the logic behind that like if i had magnus over here for example i could chop out this wonder if i had magnus up here in radom i could chop all this jungle remember jungle is trash for a culture victory and i could chop out all this great infrastructure so yeah, hopefully that is uh, hopefully that's all useful information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix that. We're gonna reassign Magnus to. Oh, it's a bit late here. Well, I guess he might be a bit. I'll put him in Radom. I'll put him over in Radom because that is where he belongs right now. And then I will reassign Pingala to the capital because that's where I'm gonna get the most value because it's the highest population city. And like honestly, it didn't even slow down the growth of the city that much. Like it took three turns off. Like realistically growth there's a, there's a very big diminishing return on growth especially when we're growing a population and we don't even have enough tiles for it to work all of these like we don't have enough tiles for these populations to actually work anything actually let me do a population count here yeah you only have 14 workable tiles but you have 15 population in here which means just one of these population is basically sitting around doing nothing generating no value for you so more growth in the capital just isn't doing anything for you now we have a national park right here and that's going to require us to get rid of that mine i think unless it's going to take these four tiles which i hope it does yeah okay so it's going to take those four tiles mm, yeah okay that's fine now over here in uh legnica we could also fit another national park right along here if we disassemble this sugar now the question is do we have more sugar and if you want to know that you type in the word sugar and your country name and you'll be able to see how many copies of a resource that you have and we have seven sugar so we can very very easily sacrifice one copy of sugar to get another national park right along here so let's go ahead and put down a tack here to remind myself that this is where this national park was going we'll go we also need to get our faith up per turn but we'll, we'll work on that sort of stuff i don't really see the value in doing this chop but i guess it'll speed up the spine it's fine now we have spent about a half an hour just criticizing and talking about the strategic errors but i think that's important to do so now we're going to actually get to work on actually winning the game oh good god those are two tanks that have spawned this is also why we don't research um tank tech early when you're going for early um neighborhoods because it spawns these really really difficult to kill units that will run around to pillage and kill things on you <sighs> it killed one of our it killed a few of our traders that's really really bad 
so hopefully this is this is actually like a really great game to to illustrate some of the common mistakes people are going to make when they're going for any sort of victory yeah this is just bad and uh, so here's the problem. We don't have units to actually deal with these tanks. Um, and you went for the volley promotion on your units, which is a bit of a mistake. So these tanks are going to run riot and just do incredible damage. Now, here's the thing. If we hadn't researched tank tech, there wouldn't be tanks running around. Do you know what would be running around? Probably musketmen. Musketmen are really easy to deal with with just field cannons. But because you researched tank tech, now you got to deal with tanks whenever people spawn partisans. So these are like all the sort of... And again, these are like really, really... Like, these are like really small decisions that have profound impacts on how your game is going to go. I'm going to step this guy out to try and get him saved. And uh, the unfortunate thing, the unfortunate thing is that we're not going to be able to use our traders until we deal with these tanks, which is going to slow down how quickly we get the Eiffel Tower, which is going to slow down. It's going to give Orbro a chance to get that finished. So over here in Tarno, we'll improve these sorts of things. Just get your Taz improved. Get the strategic resources. Also, you haven't been selling horses. I know it sounds insane to say, but even at this stage of the game, some people will buy horses. It's rare, but there's usually like one AI who never got access to horses, unless you're playing on like abundant resources. Yeah, it looks like everyone had horses. And Nider and stuff. Good God, there's a lot of strategics on this map. Um, is, this, is this a custom map? Like, here's a perfect uh, example. You could get like, a couple of farm triangles right here. You could also be placing forests and getting lumber mills, which give you incredible production. Don't be afraid to do that. Like, for example, this hill tile could very easily be a forest lumber mill. Tarno over here has built a... has done a good job. It's got a campus up. It's got a, or a theater square up. We should be looking for, for example, a commercial hub is a good option. There's also industrial zones. We could get ourselves an aqueduct. On one of these tiles if we wanted to go for an industrial zone i don't think that makes sense in the current situation you should definitely have a city settled on this coast desert coast is great and i mean great for seaside resorts which is a great source of tourism there's also seaside resorts that we could plug in here for example I'm trying to have a look around where there might be other seaside resorts there's probably no these are all hill tiles so unfortunately we won't be able to do that so i'm trying to think what the best way to recover from this is and it's probably going to involve getting holy sites up and stuff like that the city could definitely make use of if there was a farm triangle over here the city could make use of these two farms to get extra food so i'll probably send you over there to start building that up and then in the meantime we'll just work on a holy site more faith means more national parks in no in no vrakla we'll just go uh watermill granary for the production and growth you really don't have much of a military and it's always good to have like just a few units hanging around to be able to deal with stuff like this that might arise it also makes you less likely to get war declared on you by the ai so that's always a good uh, outcome too all right let's see if we can deal with these tanks a little bit okay one of the tanks is almost gone this other tank is going to be a much bigger problem it's very, very unfortunate they ran around and dismantled our trade routes. So let's harvest Advanced this, and there's the mausoleum Mahala Karnassus. Then what we're going to do is, now that we have that wonder, that wonder is going to start generating lovely resources for us. We're going to ideally get this city to kind of rethink what it's doing. It's going to work these nice coastal tiles, and ideally we'll get our hands on more of these. So we got the harbour in here, which is great. Could be, hey, there's actually an amazing industrial zone set up here if we harvest this stone. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a dam right here. Then an industrial zone right here. But the industrial zone is what we're going to work on. We're going to get that industrial zone built. And that'll give this city a ton of production to actually contribute to the empire. And this city already has like tiles that I can make use of to uh, put national parks on, for example. Oh no, you placed a campus over here, so you can't do a national park. Ah, good grief. This would have been an amazing national park spot. I was very, very careful about that. That's why I always put pins down to remind myself where not to put things so that I can build my national park. Ah, these tanks are running around just dismantling all of my trade routes. It's very, very painful and very, very disturbing and very, very obnoxious and difficult to deal with. But at the very least, we're getting rid of one of them so here's why we get military engineers because we can insert production into this dam and shave many many turns off of building it so as you can see now this city has a growth tile because we put two farms here one of them is adjacent to this farm and remember uh, farms from other players actually count 
for adjacency purposes. So this farm is now just better. Really, really good. And let's make ourselves a national park here. That'll give us a little bit of a boost towards our um, tourism. More importantly, it will give us a nice little bit of error score and just generally speaking, make our gameplay a little bit better. Right, Suleiman has researched the Mars colony, which is a bit of a problem, which is why we need these spies to go start spying on Suleiman, which is why I have this cavalry over here trying to make his way down towards Suleiman's territory. If we can get in here, and just even get a couple of scouts on some of the adjacent cities. We do have open borders with Suleiman, which is really, really important, actually. Now, why do we have open borders with him? I can't tell how long is left on those open borders, but it's really, really good that you have those open borders because it's going to give us an opportunity with this cavalry to get in here and find the cities where he has his spaceports. Okay, cool. So we did just unlock uranium, which is arguably a mistake, but I decided to stick with your decision. And you know what, man? I knew it. I knew it. When I was putting this naturalist down, I was like, I guarantee you there's going to be uranium where I just placed this naturalist. And sometimes you just got to deal with it. That's it. We, we can't do anything about that. <laughs> I, you know, I, as I was put it down, I said to myself, I swear to God, if there's uranium on this tile, and there was, wow, there's just nothing we can do about that. Now, there's plenty of uranium nearby that we could pick up as well, but I, I don't see how uranium really helps you win the game here. Just speaking personally, I can't believe it. What are the odds? I, I swear to God, I said to myself in my head, as I placed down that uh, naturalist, I was like, I guarantee you there's going to be... Is gonna be and this tank is just causing us such huge issues so if in doubt build empire-wide infrastructure like traders spies all that sort of jazz so this settler wants to head down towards somewhere that i could maybe get a bit of tourism there's a lot of nice natural uh, tundra down here that we could get some tourism from so i'll kind of send you in that direction we got ourselves a lumber mill over here look at that that's a two food five production tile in uh <laughs> Which is, which is an amazing tile. That's going to give this city crazy amounts of production. I'm surprised that you haven't placed a dam or aqueduct in this city. I, that's one of the very first things that I would have done in this city is placing both a dam and an aqueduct um, for the really, really good industrial zone. But it's a bit late for that because it's it, important, right? Uh, as it stands. So we want to get an industrial zone so they can get the benefit of at least some of these, right? Because this guy doesn't have an industrial zone, this guy. So we could easily hit three of these cities with an industrial zone, like right here, right? Yeah, we could hit we could hit three cities with an industrial zone, like placed here or maybe here or something. And that would give us a bunch of production. And up here, for example, we have, you know, and, and you want to have like just, just kind of smattering of industrial zones throughout your empire to get that a nice um, production bonus. So I think I'm going to put the industrial zone as much as I hate killing a really good tile. We're going to put the industrial zone here. We're going to put the aqueduct here. And the dam, oh goodness, that's for the dam. So we have to rearrange this now, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate positioning, actually. Well, we'll be we'll be giving a plock getting adjacency from the factory. So I think we might just leave this the way it is for now and just kind of think about that when the time comes. But yeah, you should really have these districts placed because remember, when you place a district, it, it locks in the production and, the, and it just never gets more expensive. And so now we have a nice farm triangle in here. So now Tarnov has access to two really, really great growth tiles, which will allow it to reach its housing potential. Remember, you, you want a mixture of housing, growth, and amenities in order to get your cities to reach their potential. And of course, just over here, we insert two charges in here. And now this dam is basically done in a handful of turns with just a very small investment on our part. The positioning of these things are a little weak, in my opinion. I would have maybe moved the dam if I could. It looks like you couldn't really have placed it anywhere else, could you? No. But now the aqueduct is going to be very restrictive because now... I can't actually place an industrial zone adjacent to both. So I'm not like a, a few of you, a few of you, like, I feel like you're making the right sort of decisions, but you're making them for the wrong reasons. I don't know why you're up here in St. Petersburg. Really, you should be in the Ottomans. The Ottomans are your number one threat right now. And you always want to be trying to target the player who is the most scary because he's making 1400 gold per turn in here. So we want to target the player who is the scariest because he's the one who's most likely going to kill us or win the game, and we want to try to prevent him from doing either of those things. Now, the big advantage of Danzig right now is that it can teleport production around wherever we want to build, um, what you call them, dams and aqueducts and stuff like that. So now that we got rid of this tank, we can go back to using these. I'm going to sort by production just for now. And you can see we're getting plus four production by trading with, uh, what's his name? Peter. So if we could get Peter to be an ally, we could also get benefit from Visselbanken. We also don't have a water mill in this city. That's a mistake. You should also have your shrines and temples and stuff like that built at this stage of the game. I know you were working on that, so I can't give you too much of a too much of a fault for that. So if we take a look at Katowice, um, there's great potential for some farmland up here to the north, and then some great potential for production down to the south using lumber mills. 
So we use this half of the city to generate the food and this half of the city to generate the production. So that's the current plan. So we're going to pop in here and chop that. I'm actually going to switch this city over to a builder because we can use this production chop to chop out the builder and then continue to develop the land with that builder. Although probably should first insert the very last military engineer charge into the dam to finish the dam, giving this city even more housing. So we pop in here now it has more housing and amenities so it can make use of the food and the productive tiles right this is how you kind of you always want to match a high amount of food with a high amount of another important yield like production if you have too much of either your city just won't really develop very well so you're also stealing from japan i don't know why i think you're maybe trying to steal great works i don't see why you're here you should definitely have every single spy inside of the ottoman inside of the ottoman empire inside the ottoman <laughs> she put every spy inside the footrest now we are spying on the two important ottoman cities that we can currently see who is our other contender for causing us an issue with regards to winning the game peter's a bit of a problem but we should be able to deal with him no problem in the long run uh i think i'm going to put two spies in the ottoman and see if we can't steal tech from him and disable his spaceport. So we'll put two spies in Istanbul, one to steal tech and dismantle the spaceport, and one to steal gold. We have no local infrastructure that we can build in Warsaw. W Warsaw. So we're going to work on uh, traders, builders, all that sort of stuff. Stuff that's going to help our entire empire. And traders and builders are typically those things. So like I said, over here, what I do is I harvest, and then I instantaneously get another builder that I can use to continue to improve this territory. And that's how you kind of cycle your builders out. You use the last charge of a builder to do a chop, and that way you get another builder, and you're continuously improving your territory. If you had used this on a lot of these, like, forests hanging around, your territory would be far more improved. So we have Katowice here, or Katowice, Katowice, or whatever it's called. Now, our victory condition district is the theater square, but I don't think having more theater squares is going to generate us more tourism, tourism because we already have empty slots in our current ones. So the best bet is to get temples to get more faith for more natural wonders or potentially getting entertainment complexes because they lead to arenas, which gives us tourism. And they also lead to uh, stuff like that, zoos. The other option is we could buy a water tile. Nope, they took the only water tile that we could have put a water park on. That's unfortunate. The other way we can get tourism from this city is getting a settler over onto this tile and doing that. How fast could you build a settler? Way too long to build a settler in this city. The other option then is to go ahead and generate gold using this city. And since this side of the river is going to be the side that we use for food, I will use this wheat farm over here. Although I hate crushing a wheat farm, it doesn't feel good. I will crush the wheat farm for the commercial hub. It'll take a while for it to build, but that'll eventually pay off in terms of extra tourism. And don't forget, trading, you want to trade with as many people as possible. Because also, you get a tourism boost for every single person you're trading with. If you can see here, uh, we're trading with Peter, so we get an extra 25% trade uh, a tourism boost for having a trade with him so you want to trade with as many individual people as possible so that you can get as many individual boosts to tourism per person because remember tourism is applied per person you can see here our, the number of visitors we have from each civilization is divergent in particular um the ottomans is much lower because we uh have a different government to them so we're just getting less pressure against them and we probably met them fairly later to the game so we're not getting a whole a lot, lot of stuff against them yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'm kind of dropping a little bit of knowledge sprinkled throughout this uh, footage that is going to help you guys improve your gameplay. Another really, really important tip. Whenever the AI offers you uh, a demand, refuse the demand. There's a bug right now in the game code where if you accept a demand, it actually makes them hate you more. Um, so, so don't accept their demands ever. It'll just make them hate you. There is suffrage. I really don't want to plug in suffrage at the moment. I would much rather do something else. I, I, I really want to stay in theocracy ideally i would have stayed in theocracy and got a huge amount of faith to purchase a whole bunch of stuff and we are we doing a lot of gold purchasing the gold purchasing is really nice yeah you know what the extra cards are worth it so i'm going to plug in democracy even though i would have really liked even though i would have really 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 liked to have stayed in the other one for longer i think it's just the right move and um, plus it'll mean we open up more slots for cards that we actually care about for example new deal is pretty good if you want to grow bigger cities um or you're having trouble with amenities don't think it's really the right move right here in this particular game Vissel Banken is always a nice secondary card as is Merchant Confederation just gets you lots of golden envoys I'm trying to find what would give me the most value here well you should definitely have heritage tourism plugged in you're going for a tourism game you should always have these plugged in when they're available to you but I suppose I'll put in triangular trade as we try to stabilize and get our economy back to where it needs to be now that we have suffrage 
we are going to want to head towards space race so that we get 100% or 200% production from uh, our tourism from great works of music. Even though I don't think we have a whole lot of great works of music, but we're heading in the direction of getting radio. So that'll work out pretty well for us. I want to save up a bunch of gold so that I can buy factories and coal power plants in a single turn in Krakow. So that we can get a bunch of production in that city in a single turn. I'm actually going to redirect this settler over to this oil. This oil tile right here, not only will it give us a strategic resource, but it'll give us a whole bunch of tiles that we can use for uh, seaside resorts. Everyone on the map is denouncing me, which is really, really bad. I was hoping that that wouldn't happen. Because if people denounce you, you can't get open borders with them. I don't know why everyone hates you. I don't know what you did. Um... I guess you I guess I did ally with their enemy. I guess I can't really blame that on you, can I? <laughs> as much as I want to try. I ought to be jealous of Anyway, there's the Eiffel Tower. That's plus two appeal in every tile. There was a military emergency against the Ottomans that I didn't get to vote in, which is very upsetting. I would have liked to have voted in that, but everyone voted it down, which is very, very annoying. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have allied some of these guys. Everyone hates us. That's a bit unfortunate. That's really a bad position. Like, at this point in the game, you really should have had your diplomacy handled. Um, I, you can't really... I don't think it's fair to expect me to handle your diplomacy at turn 296. That's really... You should have your you should have your diplomacy handled by around turn 150, and everyone should like you. Or at least most AIs should like you. Okay, so we're going to do... We're going to buy a forest over here, immediately switch over to building a builder, and then we're going to harvest here to get another builder, right? That's that's how you do this. You, you are always turning a builder into another builder, and then the overflow will just get put into whatever you were building before. So that's a nice way to just keep chain upgrading your tiles. And if you had been doing this, like I said, you would have much, 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 much more developed cities. And don't be afraid to chop these forests, right? I know they give extra appeal and all that sort of stuff because they're old growth, but really that's an insignificant amount of, uh, it's an insignificant amount of tourism from that compared to what you can, can be getting. Um, so I know I was going to say that this is going to be a whole forested area, but I think what we're going to do is this tile in particular is adjacent to two um, coastal tiles. So I think it would work really, really well as a forest lumber mill because that'll provide appeal to th these two tiles, which will be seaside resorts. This one over here can be a farm because it's only providing appeal to one and same with this one. I don't mind having like two little farm triangles beside each other, but this one will definitely be a forest to provide extra appeal to these two future seaside resorts that we will place once we settle this oil city. And sort of uh, one of the things that I really want to want to kind of hammer home here is you have so many unimproved tiles and, and that's a really, really big problem because the longer you leave a tile unimproved, the less valuable it is to improve that tile, right? If I improve a tile at turn 50 and the game lasts 250 turns, I'm getting a benefit from that tile for 200 turns. If I improve a tile at turn 200, yeah, maybe I get an, like maybe I'll get a little bit more out of that tile because I have all the upgrades to it, but I'm only getting the benefit of that tile upgrade for 50 turns, right? So that's why it's really 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 important to get your your empire development in terms of tile improvements really well developed. Because the sooner you get them done, the longer you're going to benefit from them. The longer you benefit from them, the the more that investment pays itself off and the more your game is going to snowball in the right direction. Again, do the builder chop trick. I go in here. I chop out a builder with this last charge. Bam. Wait a minute. Oh, that was owned by Poznan. Well, I guess I get the tank sooner. Well, I, I already have a builder on the way. Always double check your tile holdings. Whoops. That was my bad. <laughs> I just Let's not talk about that one. Cut the footage. Delete it. <laughs> Like, for example, these fishing tiles. I just improved this, and I'm pretty sure the city has been around for a little while. You could have you could have had these running, right? That's an extra one food, one production, and two uh, two extra gold. Like, that's, that's a lot of value that you just weren't getting because you hadn't improved those tiles, right? And that would allow the city to grow more. If the city grows more, it can work more of these really, really productive lumber mill tiles. You get me? That's why you always, uh, when, when you're developing a new city, improve food, then production. You get the food so you can grow a really big population and then you improve a bunch of production tiles so that you can make it take advantage of that really high population. Oh look, we got five error score for circumnavigating the globe. I'm surprised you hadn't done that yet already. I, I, I really just, that's kind of how I feel when I'm playing the game. Not, not trying to be too mean, but like when I, when I run into like something you haven't done, I'm like, huh, why didn't you do that? These are like really easy things that you can do to get your error score and all that sort of stuff. We're also getting gold stolen from us. It's not too much gold, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm also really surprised that you went for like this industrial zone play, but only built two workshops. This is like free science right here, right? This is just free science that you missed out on by not building three workshops. 
And obviously, at this stage of the game, it's too late for me to do it because, like, it's just, we're, we're far too deep into the game. So I'll put one trader in uh, in Warsaw to prevent the city from starving. I think you settled your cities pretty densely um, and built too many districts without really considering that your cities actually need to have tiles to work unless you go for industrial zones. I mean, you did get the Petra, which is pretty cool. But um, you can only really get away from a production standpoint of settling cities this densely if you go for industrial zones in most cities. Like, you have a ton of districts in here which is great, don't get me wrong, but not a whole lot of actual tiles that you can work to produce things with. Not only that, but um, faith is one of those yields that you need to get it built up early. And so building faith late is, is pretty painful. Usually what you want to do is you want to spend like the early, say classical to medieval, building up a huge stockpile of faith so that by the time you grab... Um, so that you can sit in reformed church for a very long time, getting extra faith for per citizen in cities with governors. And then by the time you unlock conservation, you can build a whole bunch of naturalists at a 15% discount and just plop down a whole bunch of those sites uh, to get a whole bunch of tourism and, uh, and um, era score that you can then feed into a golden age, which will allow you to snowball even harder. So I really I really do want to emphasize that you haven't played awfully, okay? But you have, uh, you've, you've definitely made some mistakes. So we're a little bit behind on science. So I'm going to look to trade with Korea right now. Ideally, I would be trading with as many players as possible. In fact, let me have a look. I do need to trade with as many people as possible. Right now I'm trading with Sweden, Korea, and Russia. So I need a trade route with um, Japan if I can get one. So let's have a look and see if we can establish a trade route with Japan. Why can't I trade with Japan? Is it just too far away? Uh, it looks like Japan is just slightly too far away, so I'm gonna move this trader over to Sigzazen and hope that that's close enough. You didn't, like, you sent me the save file and uh, I really appreciate that. I don't think you really gave me a whole lot of context for it, did you? Let me have a look and see if I can find the particular email okay yeah you didn't really give me a whole lot of context it's really helpful if you give me like a little bit of context to the game like what your plan was what you think went wrong and all that sort of stuff so i'm kind of just going around blindly here which makes it difficult like it's really good if you give me like a, a direct problem to solve rather than like an open-ended sort of uh, uh, this game is going poorly and I'm not winning. That's a little bit more difficult for me to address. Now, Peter is going a little bit ham. We are slowly climbing up in tourism. And uh, I think I'm going to start implementing a rule. No games being sent after turn 200. Um, games beyond turn like 200 are really, really difficult to play efficiently and save the game. Um, I'll, I'll have to see about that. I guess I'll, I'll leave it open for now. So I definitely want to get a trade route with Norway. And the reason why we want to trade with Norway is to try to improve their opinion with me. If I can get better opinion with Norway, maybe they will stop denouncing me. So over here in Istanbul, we definitely want to gain sources so that we can operate at a higher level. And then we're going to try to steal gold and all sorts of other stuff from them. My goodness, a free settler, eh? All right, there's industrialization. And also really, really important thing just happened this turn too, is we got our level two military alliance with Japan. So level two of military alliance means that we share visibility. And that means I can see what the Ottomans are up to. And my God, are they up to shit? <laughs> they got a lot of cities. They got a lot of spaceports and it's all looking pretty bad. Let me have a look. So this is a 600 gold steal from the Ottomans. Let's see if there's a better city to steal from here. Seven, 700 there. Yeah, so it looks like 600 is pretty standard of what we're going to get from stealing from the Ottomans. And we want to steal from the Ottomans because they're the ones who we want to hurt. So again, we'll just gain sources and then go to siphon funds. So there's industrialization. We don't quite have enough gold to purchase both the coal power plant and the factory, but we can definitely purchase the factory and then save up for the coal power plant. And that factory is going to start propagating production to all of our nearby cities. Also, it's going to give the city another tile to work, right? Because remember, the city has too much population and not enough tiles to work. So getting the factory in here will give it another, another thing that it can work for production. Now the city is up to 93 production per turn. That's a really, really respectable city. Too bad we can't get some of these wonders in here. Okay, so there's industrialization. Now our next step is to pick up radio because this is going to give us access to the seaside resort, which is going to allow us to get more tourism. And then computers is also going to give us more tourism. And then once you have like, so once you have um, radio, computers and steel unlocked in a tourism game, you just do not care about science anymore. That's why I don't think building campuses in a science game or in a culture game is really, really worth it. Like. You're building this campus, again, this kind of goes back to the idea that I was talking about the other game. 
Um, you're building a campus because you need science. But you don't need science now. You needed science like 200 turns ago. And this campus, because at this stage of the game, science doesn't matter anymore. Like all the science that you've ever earned that will matter, you've already earned. So finishing this campus is actually just a waste of our time. So can I not trade with Japan? Wow, okay. I really need to get another another hop over. I'm trying to trade as far away from Japan as possible. But we did get another great rider, and that's going to help fill up some of these great rider slots, which is nice. So over here in Bygosgs, we're going to grab ourselves the water mill, and then the uh, probably work on the aqueduct and dam and stuff like that. So I'm trying to think what this city could do to be helpful. Yeah, like a holy site would have been 10 times better than a campus. I'll, I guess I'll just finish the campus because it's like something that we can do in this city that I, I really don't know what this city is supposed to do otherwise. So I'll just chop that on this plantation. One production on a plantation is just not really important enough. Not when you can build lumber mills. That huge production boost is absolutely worth it. So we have a fully completed campus at the very least, which might snag us another great scientist. So we're out of great writers. Great writers are just gone. Now here's the really, really important thing. All those great writer points are now being translated into faith, okay? Which means more national parks. So we need to start grabbing land at this stage of the game to be able to lay down just national park after national park after national park. But the big problem is we're no longer getting the discount for naturalists. So that's why I like to get a whole bunch of naturalists really, really discounted in the mid game. And then I won't get many naturalists until the very, very late game when all these great people are sort of finished up. And then with a huge faith conversion of great people points, will allow me to start getting more naturalists in the late game. So that's kind of like the idea there behind it. This isn't a very good example of me beating the game. In fact, I really don't think I'm going to win this disaster, but I think this is a really, really good game for me to just give insight on what went wrong in this game. Uh, realistically, this is just far too late into the game. The AI on Deity typically wins around turn, th say, 300 to 350. Kind of varies a bit depending on how quickly they get these up. Probably going to be around a turn... Turn 400 win for the AI. So there's still a chance that I can win. Especially in the turbo, turbo, turbo late game. If I can start getting some really, really strong rock bands and targeting uh, the culture leader. The other reason, the other reason we focus on holy sites over theater squares a little bit. We, we do want a lot of theater squares, but... Holy sites are the gift that always keep on giving, right? You're always going to be able to get more naturalists as long as you have land. Whereas you run out of great writers, great artists, and great musicians, right? They they eventually just stop coming. So yeah, that's that's another sort of issue that you're going to run into. You know what, Sazen? Just get to work on a dam for me. Just, that's what I'm going to do in here. I'm just going to build up the city to be a production powerhouse. Just to kind of show you what you should have done with that city. Okay, so we are looking at some national parks here as options so if this national park is going here that leaves room for a national park where that takes up those tiles this tile is unavailable we could put a national park right here let's go ahead and plug that in right there the national park could fit neatly on this mountain range also i stole a settler I'm not sure what i'm going to do with that also you didn't nearly get enough archaeologists this game archaeologists are so good especially if you do build a few campuses like you did this game. If you do go for campuses, you should always get Mary Leakey. Mary Leakey is a great scientist that gives your artifacts 300% of their normal tourism as well as a huge science boost. I'm, I'm very disappointed if you didn't get her. In fact, let me have a look through the previously allocated. Yep, it was Korea who got her. In fact, she was up for grabs there a few turns ago. In fact, let me go ahead and make a quick save here. Could I have grabbed her? Did I just make a mistake? Yeah, I could have actually gotten this lady. Now, let me have a look. How many artifacts do you have? Yeah, you went way too hard on art museums, dude. That's a mistake. Um, you don't want to go for art museums. And here's why. Look at all these empty art museums. If you had gone for, instead, archaeological museums, you could have just gone around and gotten the archaeological great works. If we look at archaeological... What are they called again? Most of the antiquity sites are probably gone at this point. But still, the point still stands. Like... Uh, some of the mistakes you've made are so far back in the past that I can't adjust them and I don't think it's worth it to reload to pick up this guy because you actually don't have any but this is why it's re so here's why it's really really important to go for archaeologists um, first of all archaeologists allow you to generate uh, tourism without having to wait 
or compete for great artists because the AI tends to go for archaeologists quite a bit later than great artists. The second thing is Mary Leakey. Mary Leakey, just a, a great, a, 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 um, an artifact is just four times better than a great work of art if you have Mary Leakey. Not only that, but it's way easier to theme uh, archaeological great works. Way easier. Like, far and away easier and here's the other thing like an archaeological great mu great uh, museum gives you the exact same benefits as an art museum just you have to wait until natural history and by the time you get natural history you'll probably have earned like one to two great uh, artists which means you may as well just make archaeology archaeology archaeological museums because then you can fill them up at will so that's why just always 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 go for i would say um, two to one. I would say for every two archaeological museums you get, get one art museum, right? Just, that would be like a general ratio. I'm not saying that's exactly how you should do it. It should always be flexible. Like if a great artist is, or if a great artist is coming up, quickly get yourself another art museum. There's no point having the art museum if you're not, um, if you're not putting anything into it. It's not giving you tourism. It's giving you culture and you can just do other things with your production instead of like sitting on this pointless culture. Anyway, let's reload the quick save. All right, so we reloaded the quick save. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show you much of the footage. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay quiet. And I'm only going to talk when the most important things are happening. Because a lot of these decisions are very small. And this is going to take about 100 turns to win. And each turn is taking easily three to four minutes. So I've got quite a lot of footage to make here. Because uh, we're so far, so deep in the hole that it's going to take a long, long time to climb out of it. And I'm not even sure if we can do it before somebody else wins a science victory. But I'll give it my best shot and we'll be back uh, when important things happen. So in the capital, we just finished our intelligence agency. This is important for two reasons. First of all, it gives us an extra spy. Uh, second of all, it gives our spy operations a higher chance of success. And third of all, it gives us access to our late game uh, culture building, the National History Museum, which is going to give us plus four great work slots. Once you have this building, okay, once you have the National History Museum, that's when you should go for... The curator promotion on Pingala because now you have a whole ton of great works in the capital that you can take advantage of but before then don't bother so that's why I was criticizing earlier why you don't have these other things I'm gonna appoint uh, Liang and I think I have a city where I was spamming out builders don't I yeah over here in Sestua or whatever it's called I'm gonna put Liang down here for a single governor governor charge we get an extra or, or a single governor promotion we get an extra build charge on every single builder that we build out of the city the city's not really doing anything else so we may as well build builders cute little trick that you can do in your games is if your amphitheater is filled up just find the city in your thingy list so you don't have to move your guy around just find like gdansk and just move one of the great works out and then you don't have to move your great, uh, the great riders around because there's no cooldown on moving great works of riding. We just settled our seaside resort city. And what we're going to be doing is straight away working on a water park in here. And there's a really, really important reason why. Water parks, as far as I remember, um, give plus one appeal to adjacent tiles. I'm pretty sure if we check in here. Okay, it doesn't actually say it in the Civilopedia. But water parks and entertainment complexes add w plus one appeal to adjacent tiles. And since we are trying to build seaside resorts on these tiles, plus one appeal to adjacent tiles is really great. And what what's this over here? Oh, we have two forests that we can chop to get the water park finished. First chop gets it's almost halfway completed. And we don't really care about what happens after this. The city is basically worthless except for generating tourism. It happened again. Well, at least my tank is only two turns away from completing to help deal with it this time. Ay, 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 ay. This is why you don't build uh, neighborhoods until the very, very late game. All our trade routes are going to get pillaged again. That's extremely obnoxious, but we just have to live with it. So this this farm right here, I want to talk about why this farm is terrible and it's a waste of a builder charge. Um, this farm is only giving you plus one food. Um, you never want to be building a tile improvement that gives you plus one of something unless down the road it's going to be giving you plus one of more things right so this farm, if this farm had been placed here it would have been way better because then you could place more farms adjacent to it and then get extra yields because farms placed adjacent to farms gets extra yields whereas if you place it here all it does is kind of get in the way of placing a national park and uh just kind of be a waste really so i'm going to rip that up just to kind of make an example of it i'm also going to get rid of these marshes because i want to put forests on all of these tiles to make this national park slightly better trying to deal with these tanks oh, i didn't quite kill that tank that's extremely obnoxious i just realized that Kaliz is another city that i'm spamming builders in so that would have been a better candidate than the other city for liang so i'm going to reassign liang over to Kaliz 
this is just a better spot to spam build this from. The other really, really nice thing about setting uh, Pratkrav Trebelanazki is that we can trade with Germany. And I, I believe if we check our culture thing here, Germany is one of the few civilizations that we can't easily get a trade route with. So we're going to plug this into Berlin and that's going to net us a little bit of extra culture. And uh, so we are now third in terms of culture victory. Peter is still running away with the game, but I'm pretty sure that we can catch up to him before he wins. I'm, I'm pretty confident on that. All right, so we got rid of the tanks again. There'll be more coming in the near future. We finished a neighborhood in here. The shopping mall takes way too long to build. Let's go ahead and see if somebody wants to buy... Uh, everyone hates me, so no one wants to buy my diplomatic favor. That's an issue. And see, because you don't have an industrial zone in here or a very well-developed city, you just can't build the shopping mall in the amount of time that would make it meaningful. Not only that, but you don't have the power to take advantage of the really nice gold and amenities and stuff like that that it can provide. Because again, you didn't go for coal power plants. So at this point in the game, um, building theater square buildings is a little bit redundant. You've already invested into this amphitheater, so I'm going to finish it, I guess. But this, this like, once, once you hit, like, turn 200, 250... Like, you really shouldn't be building amphitheaters and stuff like that. In fact, you know, even musician points are a little bit dubious at this stage of the game. So this Cold War, and we can build rock bands. We are not going to build rock bands because there's a really, really important card in the very, very late game that allows us to choose from any promotion on our rock bands. And once we have that then we'll start investing faith into rock bands right now it's more efficient to buy naturalists and in fact i am going to purchase myself a naturalist right here in this city i also need to take control of these tiles now i'm curious actually if we look at the appeal map mode would it be better if i were to put a national park on these four tiles versus these ones right now these only have a charming appeal of three this is six versus these being six yeah i think it's better to put the naturalist on the um these tiles right here so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab these and then see if we can pull that off istanbul uh we have finished getting the higher level spying thing don't do recruit partisans at this stage of the game the only thing that matters is uh stealing gold or disrupting rocketry or stealing tech i'm going to steal tech of course similar thing over here in kaiseri gain sources before we start stealing gold gold you really should have been stealing gold a lot more uh, i don't know why you weren't stealing gold from the ai is just like a huge advantage you could just make your civilization better and there's worse at the same time it's like just a complete net positive for a player who does it we also just completed the national history museum which means we now want to start moving anything that is a high value over into here also, you made a mistake that I talk about all the time here. Um, so some of your great works are from the great artist. So <laughs> this is really, really important. Um, when you get a great artist, never put all of his great works into the same art museum. And here's why. Okay. If we look, let, let's, uh, let's see if I can get a good line of great artworks. Right. So let's look at this, right? All three of these great artworks from Q Ying are worth five culture and eight tourism. Look what happens when I move each of these into an individual city. Now all three of these are worth 9 culture and 12 tourism, okay? Remember, it was, again, it was 5, 5 and 8 versus 9 and 12, okay? And that's because a very small mechanic that not a lot of people know about, but if you have a great work of art from the same artist in a city it generates less tourism right if we look in here the first one provides three and two the second one provides one and one the museum already has a great work of art from this artist and so on and so forth i think we have multipliers to our tourism which is why this number isn't uh just five but still spread out your great works it's really really important it's a really important concept now that doesn't apply if i remember correctly um to that I, I think uh if you have a thing like this what you call it oh, what's it called oh it, it's also the same for sculptures so always spread your great works out okay really really important concept spread your great works out across all of your cities so similarly over here we're putting another sculpture in now we're getting 12 and thing if i move this out instead of getting four we'll get a little bit better over here because this is worth three and two now instead of the baseline whatever it was similarly here we just we just it's just more efficient to spread them out that's why you never want to have them all in the same place. Uh, that does not apply to artifacts, by the way, which is why artifacts are something you should always invest a lot of production into. Okay, we can purchase our coal power plant now. 20 production. That is worth 20 production. This is 20 production that you've been missing out on for a very, very long time. I really want you to appreciate that. This is 20 production that you have been missing out on in your capital city for a very long time 
because in a weak science game, you decided to kill your ability to make Renaissance walls, which is your main source of science in the mid late game in a culture game when you unlock urbanization, just so that you could get the, um, just so you could get the Eiffel Tower. When instead you could be getting six tourism per city by using the Limes card all the way back here at defensive tactics, which allows you to build walls 100% faster. And I almost guarantee you, at some point in this game, one of the diplomatic sessions was the plus 100% production towards city center buildings, which includes walls. So you could build walls three times faster than normal, just with a little bit of manipulation, and you can have those unlocked pretty early and then use them to translate into science. And it's just such a... You, you've just made... You, you've played sort of in a way that shows that you understand what you need to do in order to win. You need tourism, you need science, you need all these things. But you just, you haven't quite uh, sort of integrated how to navigate your way through the game systems to get the most efficient way to those objectives, right? But anyway, uh, I'm trying not to be too mean. So uh, National History Museum completed. Purchase that coal power plant. Always, just, if you're, if you're going to build industrial zones, get the coal power plant. It's, it's, it's the reason industrial zones are insane. Uh, I don't know if I made that clear. Because you've very clearly done the aqueduct thing that I talked about in that guide video. But you just, you, you missed out on the part where it's the, it's the coal power plant that makes this really, really amazing. And nothing else does. Uh, this is a really important thing that I did here. Uh, with regards to this uh, Congress session. The deforestation treaty. Typically the AI will be pretty fairly split. And I managed to accurately predict that two, most of the AI would vote for the proposal in favor of banning the chopping of woods or rainforest. So what I did was I just took like the uh, slightly more than half the number of the AI in the game, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine AI in the game. And so I voted five times for the outcome that I wanted, which is to make chopping woods more valuable since you didn't do a whole lot of chopping this game as far as I can tell and that will be a way for us to translate those chops into viable tourism the other stuff doesn't really matter I just voted for like range strength and I voted for myself a few times um just like to see if I could get this it looks like a couple of people voted against me and stuff like that looks like Korea voted for me which is nice so that all worked out just great for me I got a bit of diplomatic favor and I also passed the World Games, even though we're not going to participate in the World Games. The reason you pass things like the World Games is because you want the AI to work those projects and waste all of their production doing the Train Athletes project. Don't do it yourself. You're wasting your time. So now, if I harvest this forest, and ideally I want to do it while building a builder, so that I can get the extra advantage. If I harvest here, right, we look at this. Uh, it's 140 production, but I also get... Uh, I can't promise to not use espionage against you. I didn't actually get to see how much I got out of that. But that's uh, kind of obnoxious and annoying. But anyway, let's get rid of this. And now we can place our naturalist right here and get a massive boost to our appeal. Also, here's a little trick um, that maybe a lot of people don't know about. If you have a place that you want to put a national park... So I built all these forests, right? And it was telling me I could only put it here. By putting a lumber mill here, I made this no longer valid for a national park. And now the national park validity has been pushed over to this mountain range, which is where I actually wanted to build a national park. So that's just an important little thing to notice that you can kind of manipulate the game's logic and where it'll allow you to place a national park by just understanding the rules very clearly, which is you can't have a tile improvement where you want to build a national park. So if you build a tile improvement, you can kind of move where the game will allow you to build a national park. Because if there's two overlapping national parks, the game will just show you one of them. Looks like the Ottoman declared war on me. I'm not sure. I didn't get like a proper pop-up, so I'm not sure. It looks like maybe Russia declared a joint war with him, which is kind of dumb because we're trading with Russia. I don't know why Russia decided that I was their target. Um, I'm not sure why I'm at war with them. It's a little bit confusing. The nice thing is they are at war with Korea and not Japan, weirdly enough. Regardless, if I actually had that uranium, another tank spawn, good god. This is why I do not recommend building neighborhoods early into the game. They are late game buildings in my opinion, because you will just almost always end up in a situation like this. Next, we would like to pick up social media, because social media will give us access to the online communities card, which will give us a 50% tourism output to civilizations that we have a trade route with. That is really, really nice. That is a huge amount of tourism to be getting. Screw you, Ottomans. Thanks for the settler. You know what you do with a settler that you capture from the AI? You instantaneously delete it if you can't defend it. <laughs> 
Oh, I completely forgot. The other really, really important reason that you want to get computers uh, early in your game is because you get access to the Flood Barrier. The Flood Barrier is really, really important because it prevents important seaside resort tiles like these from flooding. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, and like, for example, over here, we have a neighborhood. You invested, like, a crazy amount of production into this neighborhood, and now it's just gone because you put it on a tile without having access to the flood barrier. So that's why we always, always, always go for industrialization up through to here. Sometimes you can skip this if you think you're ahead of the curve before we ever go anywhere near steel. I really want to hammer that home. You should never, ever, in a culture game, research steel before industrialization unless you really know what you're doing and not to be mean but you didn't oh i see why you were building campuses your campuses give you plus 10 tourism ah that makes sense okay sorry i shouldn't have criticized you so harshly for that one and in fact i'm going to start focusing on campuses because they're worth 10 tourism each that is a really good move well done uh, i take that back i'm really sorry for criticizing you unfairly there uh if you're building a campus for the tourism don't worry about where you put it. You're not, you don't care about the science, remember? You're looking for the tourism. So just plop it down anywhere that doesn't get in the way of a national park. If in doubt and you have nobody new you can trade with, just trade for gold. Oh my god, dude, you put a campus on a flooding tile without flood barriers. This is just 10 tourism that you're not getting anymore. Although actually you might still get it, at least until it's taken completely off the map. But still, the point remains. Don't. If you don't have a plan to get access to flood barriers, don't put districts and stuff on tiles that are going to flood. It's really that simple. And uh, you have to have a plan for these things. Um, it might seem like, you know, those flood tiles are going to happen way, 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 way in the future of the game. But that's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Popping down another national park over here. So we got three down. I'm planning on popping down another one in here somewhere. I do need to get rid of that marsh before I do that. Uh, and I'm also building up a little bit of just production for the city so that when it grows it gets useful. I'm also going to see if I can get another trade route in here as well as get a little bit more gold. All the sort of usual stuff we're working on. We are up to about 300 tourism per turn and that'll start climbing once we get our hands on computers as well as environmentalism as well as social media and all those late game civics and cards and stuff like that. Oh my goodness Antanan Arivo is in this game. Okay really 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 important. This is single-handedly almost the greatest city-state bonus in the entire game uh because you can get a 30 percent boost to your to your culture production that's insanity stop stop i don't want it no my goddamn buildings <laughs> these goddamn barbarians dude oh jesus The good news is now I have two tanks for flanking bonuses. I'm going to attack with you first and then finish him off with you. Character. Brilliant. We have just unlocked professional sports, which is a way for us to convert builder charges into yet more tourism. And we do actually have a fair amount of mountains that we'll be able to take advantage of and turn into said ski resorts. Not a huge amount, mind you but enough for it to make a bit of a difference and get us up over this current 300 tourism hump that we're on. Now we are quite a bit behind um, Russia at the moment, but we are slowly climbing ourselves and we are slowly accelerating how much tourism we're making. So I'm not incredibly worried just yet. It's still, we're, we're, we're definitely in a sketchy position with regards to you know winning the game, but I think there is a good chance that we can win. So all of our friendships ran out. Let's go ahead and declare those friendships, which probably also means that all our open borders ran out. Unfortunately, we can only get to open borders with three people at the moment due to the fact that everyone decided that they were going to denounce me, which is quite disappointing that that happened. Hopefully, people will not continue to denounce me. Let's make sure we get that nice military alliance with uh, Japan to keep him nice and strong against the Ottomans. That plus five combat strength will help. We'll get the research alliance with Korea again and we will go ahead and what the hell we'll get a cultural alliance with uh, what's his name the Aztecs. Maybe it'll help a bit. So just taking a quick review you can see um, it might not be obvious because there's still a lot of undeveloped land but we've done a good job sort of redeveloping uh, a lot of our territory. It's not quite where it needs to. For example Katowice Katowice over here is doing quite well. It's working on its commercial hub. We've got some good stuff going on in general in here. We need to keep working on it. But uh, so far, 
we've made some great progress and we're going to be able to start getting ski resorts and each one of these is worth just just a little bit of tourism but every little bit of tourism helps that's plus six tourism right there from each of these and so uh, we'll be able to get quite a few of those to help us win now unfortunately norway just denounced me again so it's 31 more turns but we want to look for anyone whose denouncement is running out soon and see if we can't get a little bit of a more favorable arrangement with them persia doesn't like us too well but we might be able to get them to be a bit friendlier if i give them 200 gold that'll give us plus 10 favorable trade deals opinion with them not only that but if i can get mutual open borders that will give us another plus three and if i could just somehow manage to get this guy to accept a resident embassy and get a friendship then i'll have secured a relationship for quite a while there's not really much we can do here unless i could get him to join my ongoing war okay he would join the war against Suleiman, but it would cost me like everything so now i have the money to actually start purchasing factories and coal power plants in places like by uh by or whatever and this city is doing quite well if we check the empire map mode you can see this is a plus four guy now so what i'll do is i'll grab myself a builder and then i'll get rid of this stone and then put an aqueduct on that tile right so here we enter into the golden age and Quite a few people might get upset, upset at me that I'm in a golden age. But now we can make a dedication and uh, probably... See, this is the one we want. We want Wish You Were Here. That's going to give us a ton of tourism. Ideally, again, if we had played slightly differently in the past, we would have a lot more national parks. And that 100% tourism to all national parks would be a much bigger deal than it currently is. We are able to get another national park in the not-too-distant future. Now, I believe, if I'm correct here... Uh, Reina over here actually has a really nice forestry management, so I'm going to appoint her. I'm going to put her in Legnica over here, and then I'm going to look to grab a second promotion here, forestry management. Also, uh, Pingala was actually uh, neutralized out of my capital, so I'm going to put him back in the capital. But if we can also get the forestry management uh, improvement here. When we place down the national parks on these tiles, there'll be a few unimproved tiles hanging around. Uh, unimproved forests that we'll be able to get some good benefits from in terms of the appeal. Unfortunately, our uh, industrial zone and our capital was pillaged also, but we do have another spy. I'm going to send another one to Istanbul. I'm trying to steal as much gold as I can from them, and we do have quite a nice stack of gold in our pocket. So over in Radom, we have Magnus placed. We have the cash. I would like to get the campus in here purely just for the 10 tourism so what i'm going to do is i'm going to purchase myself a builder and see if i can chop that out that's an extra 10 tourism if i can get that campus online similarly over here i got the water park up with uh, a ferris wheel if i can get that that would be nice i also want to work on a campus in here I'm trying to find a good spot for that campus is tough so that's going to be a national park that's going to be a national park and this is going to be too unimproved for us so i don't want to put it there so i think i'll put it right there it's fine because that's the least um problematic tile to put it on it'll take 21 turns to build there i'm not sure how i'll get more production into this city but we'll have to kind of play it by ear i mean i have as many of these like forest tiles as i can get this really isn't enough i have no idea how you got cities with like such huge populations and such low housing i really don't know what you've been doing and how you manage that but you have to explain that to me maybe something went wrong in the transmission of the save file so unfortunately, Kaliz needs to be a population of 10 or higher if it's going to take advantage of the stadium for tourism. So we're not going to work on that. What I might do is get to work on a neighborhood in this city. And there's some good tiles. This mine isn't super useful, although it is a great source of production. But we can always just put down lumber mills if we want extra production in this city. So in fact, what I will do is get to work on that neighborhood because that'll allow me to grow the city and maybe get a little bit more population in here to take advantage of that stadium. So now we're up to about 400 tourism per turn. Just giving you a little update on where we currently stand. We have 72 out of 500 tourists. This number will continue to grow. I don't know if we can win, but I'm going to give it my best shot. We're about to get another national park, uh, hopefully positioned down here, and that should start getting us up towards the 600. Ideally, I would be making about 2,000 tourism per turn. We have managed to improve it significantly, but we do have our work cut out for us. Now, in terms of getting this campus online, obviously just a bunch of chopping in here will do that trick. 
So there is the broadcast center, which will allow us to place more uh, great works of music. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of great musicians left. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just spend a little bit of gold to get this great musician. Uh, just kind of grab him while I have the option to. Since now that I have the broadcast center, it's also going to be worth it to plug in the space race card when I get around to that. I don't have it plugged in currently, but my next unlock, I'll plug it in. I could plug it in right now, but I don't think it's worth it. And in the capital, we'll probably repair the coal power plant and then build the broadcast center. I'm going to need a few of those around, so we'll probably identify good cities to build them in where we can build them in a not too long amount of time. Ideally, I would be purchasing them with gold that I had stolen from all the other AIs, but we didn't have the proper spy stuff in place for that. And uh, now we need to pick up computers because this gives us a plus 25% tourism boost across our entire empire, which will be a nice multiplier to get us up to where we need to be. We also managed to grab ourselves an archaeologist who I will maybe be able to squeeze out a little bit of tourism because there's a few little bits and bobs here and there. If I can get over to this and grab that, for example, I want a campus over here in Woods because I want the plus 10 uh, tourism from building campuses. So now we can build campuses really quickly in Bidegodes or whatever it's called. And we can also start slapping down a few of these nice ski resort things once we chop this out. So another flooding has happened, which means a whole bunch more tiles have gone under for us. It sucks. It is what it is. Nothing we can do about it. We're just going to have to accept that some of these tiles go away. Also, I would really like a campus in this city. And I'm trying to think, I guess I don't need that many farms in here. So I'm going to plop a campus down in here once the Sukunis is done. And that'll be another plus 10 tourism. We're up to 410 tourism, which is a pretty good amount. And our spies are escaping with gold from our various places that we have them sent to so things are looking okay like i'm 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 not like terrified at the moment i'm not like super happy with our position but i'm not hating it either it's also about time that we started putting down some seaside resorts to get ourselves some extra tourism that's why i'm building builders and so many of them and trying to get so many of them out because just getting those builders out is really really important to get that extra little bit of tourism that we're going to snag Damn it, the AI is chained denouncing me. That is so unfortunate. I was really, really hoping that I could maybe get some diplomacy going here. But basically, everyone chained denounced me. Um, maybe I can get peace with Russia soon. I built up a little bit of a military to uh, maybe make friends with him. I don't know if he really wants peace, though. He'll actually take a white piece, which I will now take the opportunity to do a whole bunch of diplomacy with Russia in the form of giving him gifts and open borders and trading with him and all that stuff to try and make him happier. And uh, then see if he wants to join my war against... Can you join against the Ottomans? He wants way too much gold for that. And that's unfortunate. How much do you value diplomatic favor is actually a great question. So... He only values it a half, so I could actually technically get him to join my war against the Ottomans for quite a bit cheaper if I spent all my diplomatic favor on that, which isn't bad. And we could probably do a deal here as well for these spare luxuries that he has for a little bit extra. I don't think I have anything that he wants, do I? Give him a bit of oil that will cut the price down. What if I also gave him coal? Hey, giving him coal cuts the price down a little bit. So I think this is a worthwhile spend of diplomatic favor. It's not an ideal situation, but if I can get w Russia at war with the Ottomans, I think that might just be enough to get him on my side because now we're both at war with the same target. I'd also like to get a trader to trade to trade with Russia to improve our relations again. So I'm going to buy myself a trader to hopefully do that next turn. Don't have a campus in the capital. I hate crushing some of these tiles. Unfortunately, it's got to be right here. That's where it's got to go. But that'll give us another 10 tourism per turn in the capital, which is a really nice amount. Also, you had the... You actually had the literal perfect... Um, Literal perfect industrial zone here. You could have gone uh, dam, or sorry, um, canal, aqueduct, dam, 
and had a plus six base, plus eight base industrial zone here, which would have been pretty cool, but you weren't able to do that, which is fine. Um, so campus is already producing in here, so I'm probably just going to spam out builders and hopefully be able to improve my terrain, get some of these mountains improved and all that sort of stuff. All right, so uh, unfortunate reality check here. We did manage to get up to 500 tourism per turn, but Korea is unfortunately traveling four light years per turn. So I think that is going to tell me that the game is over because there's no way I can win in time. I think I, think I could win this game um, if I had been given the save maybe 50 to 70 turns earlier. But the fact that you gave me the save, okay? I want this, I want this to be really, really, really clear. Um... You sent this save to me on turn 287 going for a culture victory um and you were just you were making like 150 culture per turn and you had made so many mistakes along the way that i don't think there really was a way to save this game however i still think there's a lot of value in in me trying to save this game because i at least i got to show you what the right moves are okay you focus on the things that matter social media right these are your key late game sort of things your 50 percent tourism output having really good diplomacy having getting environmentalism waiting for the late game cards to get rock bands getting as many national parks as you can working on computers to, to not only to be able to defend your tiles using military engineers but also get the plus 25 percent tourism across your empire so i think i think in general i managed, I managed to kind of bring your empire back up to something resembling a reasonable empire it's still nowhere near where it needs to be just like the sheer number of builder charges that you need to fix this empire is is kind of crazy and i still haven't managed to get the seaside resorts up here because uh, i've just been spending my goal on more important stuff like i know it sounds like dumb to say well these are seaside resorts these are clearly important but like <laughs> i've had to spend a lot of gold to try and bring some of these cities online to get these campuses online and stuff like that so i i think i think if if i had this around turn 250 or turn um say turn you know 225 turn 200 i could very easily save this game but i think once you're i think i want to say once a game is beyond turn 227 it's very difficult if not impossible to save the game especially in this kind of map where i don't know what you did but I'm fairly certain, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but this number of sieves on a map this large isn't normal standard settings. I'm pretty sure you set like the map size to the biggest and then just put like a normal amount of sieves on it. Because I don't see anyone dead from domination. I don't see any capitals captured or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure this is just a huge map. And you have to be very clear when you're playing on a huge map, you need to settle like crazy. Because if you imagine... Um, if you imagine, the AI is getting an 80% production boost, which is why their yields are so insane compared to yours. So that 80% production boost has to be compensated for by settling an insane amount of cities. And there was plenty of room. Uh, um, you should have, in my opinion, once you had the Ancestral Hall, uh, so this is the kind of basic idea. Once you have the Ancestral Hall, you should only build settlers in the city that built the Ancestral Hall until you can build a coal power plant. Or, or not a coal power plant, until you can build an industrial zone, and then you build the industrial zone of the aqueduct, and then immediately go back to building settlers with the extra production that you get from that. Um, but yeah, you, I, I feel like a lot of these cities were settled just a little bit too late, and I'm even still trying to settle more cities just to get more land to be able to put down more national parks. Your faith income wasn't anywhere near where it needed to be. You didn't nearly get enough uh, great people in terms of your great writers and stuff like that. You focused way too hard on art museums, and uh yeah but i i i want to say those are those are the mistakes you made and there was other strategic macro level mistakes that i talked about at various points throughout this video but i will say this you didn't do terrible okay you you lost the game for sure but you you definitely by the way you've played and and, and the sort of things that you've done throughout this game that i've been able to sort of surmise and look at from what you've done um you definitely didn't play the worst Ever, right you, you just have a few little corrections you need to make to your gameplay and what you focus on and how you make your way through the tech tree when you're going for a culture game and you could definitely be making a huge uh, a, a huge push to play on deity rather than immortal 
I definitely think this player has a lot of potential and they could very easily get to the level where they can beat Immortal consistently and even take on Deity consistently because they, they definitely demonstrated that they have an understanding of like the fundamental game mechanics and what's important. They just they don't have a full grasp of like the, the nuanced stuff, like the sort of more uh, technical aspects of the game. Like, for example, the, these little things like moving your great works around to make sure they're not stacked in the same city so that you get more value out of them and uh, other stuff like that. I'm trying to think of what a good example is. Also, I guess you could have also made the argument that I should have put like all my great works of music in here rather than in, in somewhere else so that I could get more of my great works of music out. That's actually a, a, a thing that I could have done. And, and don't get me wrong, I didn't play this game perfectly, right? And, and I never ever want to say that I played the game perfectly, but I definitely feel like... I definitely feel like I could have won from this position uh, if I had the game a little bit earlier. Um, so I think going forward... Um, I might be putting turn limits on... Well, you know what? Actually, I don't think... I, I was going to put like a turn limit where you can't send me the game if it's later than 275 turns. But I think I'm going to leave that in there because even if you send me a game that's beyond that, it gives me the opportunity to look at where you've made mistakes and give you guidance on how you would change that. And uh, yeah. So hopefully you guys have found this uh, useful. Unfortunately, this isn't a win, uh, but... We uh, we gave it a good shot, and we even managed to get up to the point where, if we look at the culture um, generation over here, like for example, we're currently you know basically number one for culture, right? We're, we're making five hundred and two culture. Uh, Ottomans are making five hundred and five, but we're about to unlock online communities. We're only one tech away from getting computers. So like, if I had just a little bit more time to get this game under uh, under control. I feel like we definitely could have won this. So your fundamentals are great. It's just like the, the very small fine detail of how you maximize your tourism. It's just not quite there. But yeah, this is um, trying, to, trying to summarize now the, the whole information and, and concept behind how, how they could have improved this game. And really what it is, is make sure you're investing in the things that matter early enough for them to matter. So for example, a lot of your cities uh, builders like the cost like, look at the cost of your builders right your builders currently cost 225 26 production but if i go back to when you originally sent me this game i'll just make this as a quick save real quick um just so we have this as an example should we ever want to come back to this game to talk about it but yeah let, let's load up the original save and kind of just like talk about the position that you were in a bit more All right, so here we are. Here we are back where we were many, many turns ago before, back when we had hope and that we could win this game. Um, this I, I, I feel like these sorts of things, um, where was it? It's important when you're sending me your saves, you give me a little bit more context. Uh, do, 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 do. Where the hell was this? Yeah, this, this sort of stuff right here. The campus districts provide plus 10 tourism. It's important to tell me about like game-changing stuff like this in your email when you send it to me because that's going to really dictate how I play. I didn't see this early enough into trying to save this game. And uh, the other thing is, send, send me games a little bit earlier if you can. It's okay if you want to send me a late game file. I'll still review it and have a look at it. But generally speaking, the earlier the game is, the more I'm going to be able to show you how to actually win the game. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think now what else. Oh, yeah, I wanted to check the price of your builders. So your builders cost 130 production. So let's talk about this. Right, so so the base price of a builder is shit. What is it? it it's, um, goodness, why, why can't I remember? It's, it's 50 production. Um... You have built throughout this game, and we can, we can make this deduction, right? You have built 20 builders, um... And I do not see, you, you, so how do, we, how do we get that information? Basically, you take 130, you minus 50, so that leaves us with 80, you divide that by four, and that's how many builders this person has built, roughly speaking, right? So they've built 20 builders. I do not see 20 builders worth of tile improvement in your empire, okay? Realistically, you should be getting somewhere in the region of five to six build charges with the serfdom card and the use of Liang, right? To maximize your builder charges, uh, 
the use of Liang, right, to maximize your, your builder charges that you're getting throughout your empire. And you'd have way more tiles, almost double. You should have twice as many or more tiles improved at this stage of the game. You're on turn 287 and you have unimproved tiles in your empire. That is unacceptable. Um, like, like a very simple example is like right over here, this city. You have a hill here and presumably this is not that far from your capital. And this city is population 10. You could have had this be a mine for like 150 turns, giving you plus one to three production. That's like 200 to 300 production that you just flushed down the drain um, because you just didn't build enough builders. You needed more builders and you need to build them more efficiently. I'm not trying to be mean here, but what do farms do for the city? You have a massive population in here, but not enough housing. You have a massive population in here but nothing to do with that population because you can't work production. So it's really important when you're growing a city, you need to not only just get food and housing and amenities, but when you're doing all that, you need to make sure you're getting something from growing a city really big. And you, you, like when you're developing a city, you can't just be like, oh, I want to have a 10 population city because I want to grow a really big city. That's fine if you want to do that just for the sake of doing it. But it's really, really important that when you're doing that sort of thing, if you're trying to like translate that into some kind of value elsewhere in the game, that you know what that value is and how you're going to get it. So by so, for example, if I was looking at this city, I would say, oh, you know what? I'm going to grow this city really big because there's a lot of flat land out here and hills that I could work as production. And then I can translate that into a whole bunch of builders that I could use to improve my other cities, right? And, and this is another problem that I'm making a guess at here. Um, this is a big uh, sort of hurdle that a lot of civilization players run into, is they think of each city as an island, okay? When it really isn't. Each city is not an island. No man is an island, and in Civilization VI, no city is an island. You have ways in your power to transmute production in one city into benefits in another city and builders are your most powerful tool for that that's why liang is so important because liang right as it currently stands right you you don't have the builder charge thing plugged in right you have the power to translate 130 production into three tile improvements in any city in your empire right but you can designate just like I do with the encampment district. And typically I will pair this concept with the city that builds the encampment district because that's where I'll build my engineers and builders from. And, and what I'll do is I'll use that city's production to transmit production in the form of builders, traders and stuff like that over to my other cities so they don't have to build those things. And if those cities don't have to build those things and I can produce them centrally, then I can plant Liang in a city. And instead of getting... Uh, three build charges for 130 production, which is, if we do a little bit of math, right, you divide that by three, it's like uh, 40, 43 production per build charge, right? If we do that with Liang, we're now getting, um, you know, uh, d -d 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 is it, what is it, 40, 43, so that you divide that by four, multiply by three. It's like 30... 32.5 production per build charge, okay? So that's a huge saving cost. That's that's a that's a 33% saving cost on every build charge that you make just by having Liang plugged in and having a city dedicated to making your builders. And then if you plug in the all important plus two build charge card, I'm um, trying to find it here. The public works, you plug that card in, now you're getting six build charges for like 100 and, uh, 130 production which is twice as efficient as you have been building builders up to this point. I really want to emphasize this card right here should never, ever leave your government, ever. The second you have serfdom or public works unlocked, they should always, and I mean always, be in your government. You should never, ever remove these cards from your government unless you know exactly why you're removing them from your government and exactly why you no longer need extra bill charges and it looks to me like you just didn't really do that so i hope i hope hopefully i have given this player and anyone else watching some good advice but unfortunately this is not a winnable game and i love you all very much i hope you guys enjoyed this disaster and i'll see you next time Bye bye <laughs>